Hi, and welcome to this week's episode of Moto Headlines, where it's big news in the 250 class with all new bikes from Kawasaki and also Yamaha. Plus, we look at the Beta 300cc two stroke motocross bike, a limited edition machine. Plus, Tommy Searle and Scuba, his Honda teammate, go scrubbing mad at Roxton, and there's new kit from Arai with the Bam Bam Barsha frog helmet, plus cool retro kit from 250 London in this week's Moto Headlines. So it's been a big week for bikes in the MX2 class. And of course, if you're a MX2 racer, chances are you've probably bought either a KTM or a Husqvarna or maybe a Yamaha because power's everything in this class and we know all those bikes are right up there in terms of BHP. Honda and Kawasaki, they're right behind. Well, Suzuki, if you've got one of those, you probably bleed yellow. There are very few of those around, but it's been a big week for news of the MX2 bikes from Yamaha and from Kawasaki. So let's start with the Yamaha. It's a big year for Yamaha. It's their 65th anniversary and they've really gone to town on the MX2 bike, the YZ250F. Yamaha say every component on this bike has been redesigned, although actually, really, the 450 had all the changes last year and the 250 inherits them for this year. But there are some key changes that should make this bike even better than normal. Yamaha has focused on the engine and the chassis. In terms of the engine, Yamaha has focused on the mid to top end range, which is of course where most 250 racers spend the majority of their time. They've done this with a new camshaft on the exhaust side that has a different profile, new fuel injection settings, a longer silencer, an updated ECU and an improved water pump impeller. But the way they've really got more power is to really focus on the air intake system. Now Yamaha still has the, the kind of backwards engine. Um, it tilts backwards so that the air goes in at the front and the exhaust out of the back, which is different to every other bike on the market. This means you can get a really good airflow into the front of the engine, which is key. And Yamaha this year have really focused on improving that. So the whole intake system is completely new. There's a redesigned air box, so there's none of the old school inlet funnel. Uh, this air box has been made a little bit shorter to allow a smoother and more direct route for the incoming air. And the air filter housing cover on the front of the seat has got new channels in it, uh, which increases the volume of the intake air for even more performance at higher revs. Now, a lot of riders last year played with modifying their air box covers to get some more air in. Now Yamaha has done it for you. The clutch holder has thicker walls and a stronger, because obviously clutch is really important on a higher revving bike like a 250. Third, fourth and fifth gears on both the ingoing and the output shaft have been redesigned and some of the gears are glass bead blasted to get rid of any friction. On the chassis, it's just like the 450 was last year, which in other words is all new. The swing arm is right off the 450. The actual frame itself might not look totally different to the old 250F, but the wall thicknesses has been changed to give the bike a different feel. The handlebars are further forward, there's new triple clamps, a new bar mounts and a new front axle. The Kyaba forks and rear shock, which are really good quality, everyone knows that, have been revalved with new settings, so no big changes there, but Yamaha have also focused on the brakes. There's a bigger front caliper and bigger discs all round, and the caliper's even lighter than before. And of course looks are important, so the new blue bits on the side plates, the rims and the head. Yamaha call it Icon Blue Bodywork because it's their 65th year and obviously they're pushing their heritage look there. Although I kind of think white or yellow is probably where I'd like to see Yamaha's. But it's a new look for the bikes uh, with blue side plates are so the obvious changes. Also, they're going to offer Monster Energy Editions in the 250 and the 450. These will go on sale a little bit later than the standard. The 250 is on sale in October. The Monster Energy version is a little bit later. The 450 is actually pretty much in the shops now. The Monster Energy versions just look different. There are no changes. And while we mentioned the 450, it's easy to think it hasn't got any changes. Actually, that's not true. There are some changes to the 450. It's got engine changes with steeper angles on the valves, a more aggressive cam profiles, and a high compression piston with low friction rings. There's a longer con rod, a larger exhaust head pipe connector, higher flow air filter, better breather system, and a smaller and lighter magnesium valve cover. It also has a revised launch system too. And of course, when you talk about Yamaha, you've got to talk about the two strokes, the 65, 85, 125 and 250. All these don't really have any major changes for next year. In fact, they don't get any changes mechanically. 
they just get the new Icon Blue look. So obviously, that's the big news on Yamaha. That bike is really quick. It's been a bit heavier in the past. We promised this new one is a little bit lighter and it should really put it right up at the front of the pack again. The most successful bike in AMA 250 racing for decades has been the Kawasaki KX250, largely thanks to the Pro Circuit team. Now Kawasaki for 2021 has released essentially an all new bike and it really is a very, very special machine and it has electric start the first time on any 250 Kawasaki. Now the engine, that has had a lot of changes both to the top end and the bottom end to give it more power right the way through. It's now got electric start, it's got a Belleville clutch, there are improved brakes, updated KX450 style frame like the bike had last year on the big bike. The suspension has been finely tuned and of course, all new graphics and actually all new bodywork. Now let's look at the motor on the 250. It has a new engine with increased peak power, say Kawasaki. There are new intake and exhaust ports, new exhaust cam timing, stiffer valve springs, a new combustion chamber design with a flatter piston crown, the con rod's longer, there's a lighter crankshaft, there's that new Belleville washer spring hydraulic clutch. Yes, it's a hydraulic clutch, hooray, we love those. And instead of having the conventional coil springs, it's got a Belleville washer which keeps the pressure on the plates. Similar to KTM I've been using for quite a few years. And also like the KTM, KX250 now has electric start. Hooray for that. In terms of the clutch, the Belleville washer not only makes a more reliable clutch, but actually makes the feel slightly lighter. And of course, 250s are all about engines. And Kawasaki have used a finger follower valve actuation, which was designed by their World Superbike team several years ago. That continues in this new bike. The exhaust cam timing has been retarded by three degrees. There are lightweight titanium valves, which reduce reciprocating weight and offer high RPM reliability. And the valve springs are now stiffer to match this higher rev limit. The Conrad is also three millimeter longer, which Kawasaki say decreases the stress on the cylinder. And the cylinder itself has actually moved three millimeters further forward. The airbox features a shorter tapered intake funnel, which obviously should give higher RPM performance. Now the KX250 was the first production motocross bike with dual injectors and an injector downstream of the throttle valve, which gives a, a second jet of fuel for instant response and a second upstream injector close to the airbox for real contribution to high RPM performance. That obviously stays. Now there's been a change in the exhaust designed to increase high RPM and the Hydrofirm joint pipe has a reverse taper design. Kawasaki's really worked on the positioning of the intake duct for a straight approach so the air goes right in there. The downdraft style intake routing increases the air's intake approach angle into the cylinder which is supposed to improve the efficiency and therefore increase power. While many manufacturers have Wi-Fi control, it's standard on the uh, Yamaha, also it's a plug-in unit available for Husqvarna and KTM. Kawasaki, what it does, the bike comes with three different couplers, which you basically plug into the wiring loom and it changes the power. In that way, these four pin couplers select maps are designed for standard, hard or soft terrain settings. So you just plug it in and off you go. And of course, the bike also features launch control. On the chassis, it's got basically the 450 style chassis with a 450 swing arm and the chassis itself is stiffer around the steering head for more precision. There's a new lower triple clamp. There's new linkage ratios on the rear suspension. The front and rear suspension has had new settings. It's still the same, but it's got new settings. There's a smaller rear disc on it. Uh, the front master cylinder is the larger one off the KX450. And there are rental fat bars. And Kawasaki loves to promote the fact that its bike's really adjustable for riders of different sizes. Both the handlebar position and the foot peg position are adjustable. The bodywork is really different. Really built to help riders move around the bike. It's flatter at the top of the fuel tank, there are slimmer radiator shrouds, and the engine covers are smoother as well. And of course, there's the all-important gold finish on the oil cap and generator cover plugs. We all like a bit of bling, right? The 450 hasn't had many changes, but it had that last year. However, there are a few. There's a new lubricant coating on the piston skirt, larger diameter clutch plates and revised friction material. And like the 250, the big MX1 450 also gets the new Belleville washer spring hydraulic clutch. Also like the 250, it gets new rental fat bars, which is great. Now in America, Kawasaki's also launched XC versions of the 250 and 450. Essentially, they have an 18 inch rear wheel, they come with a size stand, and all the settings are more geared towards enduro or cross country style racing, but it looks like, unfortunately, they're not coming to the UK.
Now, it's been a long time since the manufacturers launched an all-new two-stroke motocross bike. Well, it's happened with Beta, the Italian firm really well known for its world championship winning trials bikes and also enduro bikes. And now it's launched a motocross version, 300cc, two-stroke, motocross specific. Beta say this bike has been tuned for motocross and it's got two really well-known motocross riders, Rodney Smith, the former world championship rider, and Jake Weimer, one of the guys who was US 250 champion and represented USA in the motocross of nations. Both these guys have helped develop this bike and are shown giving it some beans in this cool video. However, the bad news is it looks like it's only going to America and it's already in limited numbers, but it is a cool looking bike. The bike's called the 300RX, features an electric start, 293cc engine with a six speed gearbox, and the engine has been tuned for motocross rather than enduro. There's an adjustable power valve, pretty much like on the KTM, and that means you can adjust the amount of hit the engine provides. The chassis itself isn't off the Enduro bike. It's an all new chassis built just for motocross. So fingers crossed this becomes part of an actual range of motocross bikes in the future. The suspension travel is slightly longer on the motocross bike. It's got KYB closed cartridge front forks and a sax rear shock. The suspension settings were developed in America by Beta USA to make it right for motocross. So other features of the bike include lightweight lithium battery, 19 inch rear wheel, push button seat removal, Brembo hydraulic clutch, Nissan front and rear brakes with big rotors, there's an arrow exhaust pipe, a composite rear subframe and a V-Force reed assembly. And the rear shock can be unbolted in less than 10 minutes without even taking off the subframe. Now the first shipments are scheduled for late October, however, you best be quick if you want one in America, you have to order one now. So on to racing news. And finally, the Grand Prix and Motocross Donations calendar has been announced and big surprise for everyone, the Nations is coming to Britain on September the 27th at Matterley Basin. Yes, it's really going to happen. Well, so says the calendar. With COVID-19 affecting big sports everywhere, each country has its own rules for immigration and for crowd control. And at the moment, Steve Dixon, the man behind the British Grand Prix at Matterley Basin, has stepped forward at really short notice. Rumour has it less than a few hours where he just said, yes, I can run the Nations at Matterley. It means the Nations will run before the end of the Grand Prix season for the first time ever. It also means, as it's in September, that chances are the Americans won't send a team because they'll be focusing on their US nationals. Also, it's part of sweeping changes across the Grand Prix this year. We've only had two Grand Prix this year. Of course, the opener at Matterley and then also at Valkenwaard in Holland before the COVID-19 pandemic struck. However, the series now kicks into life again and there are two MXGP triple headers involving midweek races. So Kegums in Latvia starts on August the 9th, then on the 12th and 16th are two more rounds, then Lommel in Belgium has October 18, 21 and 25, and there are also two GPs at Faenza in Italy on September the 16th and 20th. The calendar is ram-packed right until the end of the year, and there are still two events in Russia and Portugal to be confirmed. Now, the new calendar doesn't leave much room for domestic championships, such as the British Championship, unless they can get something going in July, and that now looks really unlikely. The MX Nationals have announced August the 1st for their four-round series, but there's been nothing from the ACU yet. Now, of course, this new Grand Prix series is going to be very different. Yes, several rounds all at one track, and if you're Geoffrey Hurlings, you've got to be loving that Kegums, which is pretty sandy, and also Lommel, which is very sandy, that six of the remaining rounds are going to be there. The GPs themselves will all be held on one day. Practice in the morning, qualifying in the morning, races in the afternoon, a one day format. The day before is gonna be support class racing, the women's racing, the European championship racing. So it is a very different season. And of course, the Nations itself. Now, it's been announced that riders will score Grand Prix points at the Nations, but how's that gonna work? Does that mean that every Grand Prix rider gets to represent their country? What about riders who would be picked for their country but aren't racing in Grand Prix? For example, Max Anstey, last time at Matterley Basin, he ran away with it. He's racing in America. And people like Tommy Searle, there's a good chance he could be our pick for the MX1 slot. Will he be allowed in to race? It's a big nightmare. However, this year is an unusual year. It is very different. We're going to have to accept it. And fingers crossed, all we want to see is some racing again. And to see the nations in Britain in whatever format it's going to be, even if it's without Team USA, then that's a great thing. Best book your tickets for your hotels now. So, suspension. We all know suspension is key to going fast on any motocross bike. And chances are, you've probably got WP suspension already if you're a KTM or Husqvarna rider. 
WP also makes suspension to fit all of the bikes. But is it good enough for you? Now, Yamaha have always had fantastic KYB suspension. So we took the brave move of bolting some WP stuff onto a YZ450F to see actually, is the aftermarket WP suspension really good? Dave Willett rode the bike. Let's see what he thought about it. As you can see, the setup's a little bit different. I've got WP suspension in, cone valve front forks, tracks rear shock. Um, just been out on the bike, first impressions and mega. Okay, so what did I feel first of all? Well, in all honesty, I just felt that the bike had a little bit more balance. Sometimes on the, on the stock on the stock suspension, you have a rocking feeling, back and forth. Normally, when you come in on on the brakes, you know that we know that the Yamaha has struggled with a bit of front end grip over the years. But normally, when you come in on on the brakes, it can just get away from you and just tuck maybe a little bit, especially in these dry, hard conditions. Whereas I just felt that that didn't happen. It just stayed up a lot higher in the fork, really let me get the front brake into play, even on this hard surface. Acceleration wise, coming out of the acceleration bumps, I just felt that the bike just had real good drive, really planted feeling. It just felt firmer, more balanced, and um, I just felt more settled on the bike in all honesty. Feel real at home in it, just gives you some confidence feel really settled on the bike and, and really um, comfortable in it in order to flick it about and let the bike move around especially with the 450 power out there on that surface you know it's very easy to get the to get the, the back end round and of course you can watch the whole video here on our youtube channel so action is finally starting again here in the uk racing has actually been allowed but actually it's more like practice days last weekend we took a trip up to Roxton, the really well-known AMCA track, which frankly is easily good enough for a British Championship. Let's have a look at some of the action there. Loads of cool riders, loads of great people having lots of fun on a track that started out perfect, but ended up really dusty as the wind and the hot weather really kicked in. However, there were two riders who'd never ridden there before, Bill Base Honda's Tommy Searle, and also his 250 MX2 teammate, Stephen Clark. They both took the chance to ride the track and were loving it. And of course, they had a little bit of needle. Well, light-hearted. Hear what they say. Uh, we're at Roxton today. I've never been to this track, but everyone I've spoken to about it always says, ah, oh, it's the best track, um, best track ever. But I've come today, it was a little bit dry in the afternoon, but the first session was brilliant. They normally say they do put a bit more water down, but nonetheless, it was, um, I loved it, to be honest. It was more, I'd never been to a track, this track before, and I kind of like going somewhere new. Doing the first session, it was wet, slippery. I tried to get into it quickly, like a qualifying session at the British Championship. So just being out in that first session, getting that, putting my laps in fast, um, getting used to the track quickly, that, that alone was worth coming down. Road around with Stephen for a bit. He seems to ride well. He goes well on his tracks. Um. It's always good riding with him because he brings you on. Do you know what I mean? He's got a lot of speed. And um, it is, well, I tagged on behind him in that last session, actually. and. Uh, Tried to pick up on a few of his lines he was using differently to me and like I say it's good it brings us both on me pushing him and pushing and you know trying to pull away from me it's good. No, he couldn't he went really on my pace today bless him. He might say he was in the video but he needs to find a few seconds. Okay product focus and in this episode we're looking at the RI lid the new Troy Lee Designs RI lid. Yeah, it doesn't seem right, does it? Troy Lee has his own range of helmets and he's designing a helmet for Arai. However, it all really works well. Now, Troy Lee is one of those mavericks in motocross. Now, back when I was really young, like 12 years old, I used to hang out at Pro Circuit or Anaheim Husqvarna and Troy Lee was one of the riders then. He rode for Mitch Payton. He was a car paint sprayer just before he really started his helmet painting business. Nowadays, Troy Lee is known as one of the best designers in the world. He's designed helmets over the years for some of the fastest riders and obviously has his own riding kit for BMX, motocross, dirt bike riding, downhill mountain biking, everything. So when Troy got the chance to design a helmet for Barsha, of course, we count Justin Barsha as British now. He's married to an English girl and spends quite a lot of time in the UK. Then Troy took the chance to work with Justin to make a really cool helmet. Check out the video. Rai builds a beautiful helmet. They just called and said, would you be interested in, and I went, yeah, I'd love to work with Barsha. That'd be, that'd be awesome. Um, you know, Rai is a competitor of ours, but um, I, I think that's, that's my goal. I love working with people that are competitors of ours. And they build beautiful products, and I get to come in and add the color to it. It, it really is a fun part, of, fun part of my job. 
you know, we started from scratch, nothing. You can see that's that's exactly where we started from. And, you know, as we worked through it, we, you know, we looked at some of Troy's helmets from, you know, the past years, 20 plus years ago. And I saw some bright colors and, you know, I, I really like a good flow, but I also like, you know, like sharp curves. So you can see on the helmet, we have, you know, super good flow with some sharp lines and obviously the bright colors, you know, got to have the band as well. So it's like, got all my little nicknames in there. And yeah, it's just, I mean, it's absolutely perfect. <laughs> he's one of those guys that goes for it all the time, and I like it, you know? I mean, that's the, he, you know, he's like, I'm, this is my job, and I'm gonna get this thing done, you know? It was just really cool to sit here with Troy and um, hear his stories from back in the day. You know, for me, it brought back a lot of memories as well, because as a kid, you know, that nickname, Frog, man, I was probably, you know, just got on 85s, so I was probably like, you know, 11, 12 years old, so it brought back some cool memories of that and my Bam Bam days on the 250s and sometimes even now, every now and again I got the Bam Bam, but uh, <laughs> yeah, just great memories and you know, new, making new memories. And you have to go through these highs and lows and you have to learn how to deal with it. He was my friend that pushed me to paint helmets. I really kept saying, oh, I don't want to paint helmets for a living, man. This is crazy, man. Well, the funnest part of my job is to sit down and work with an athlete and have them super walk out of here super stoked, you know. See you guys. And in other product news, if you do want something really different, then 250 London, check out their stuff. It's very retro inspired. It's designed by a, a tailor, a guy called Adam Waite from London, who not only makes posh bespoke suits for city types, he's mad keen on motocross and also mountain biking too. Here's some of his new kit. Check out their website, 250 London. Tell them we sent you. Time for our news roundup. And let's start 2021 Yamahas. Haven't we already looked at those? Well, actually, if you're in Australia and you want to buy a YZ125 or a 250, you actually get a pretty special bike. You get a GYTR Special Edition. Now, lots of people have been very excited by this, thinking this was going to be the full GYTR kit made by Rinaldi, but actually, it's not. It's an exhaust and a silencer. It's a V-Force reed block, a little bit of bling in terms of a blue rear sprocket and a whole shot device, and some fancy graphics. However, that's a pretty sweet deal if you're looking to buy a brand new YZ125 or 250, and you live in Australia. In other news, Zach Osborne's gone enduro. Actually, just for the weekend, he decided to ride an enduro while he gets in shape for the forthcoming AMA National Championship, which will feature in the 450 class the 250 Supercross champion Chase Sexton. Sexton is now Ken Roxon's teammate on the HRC 450 and has been out on the bike. Let's take a look at some of the action. <laughs> I mean, I couldn't ask for a better team to step up to the big bike class. I've been looking at these guys since I was on Geico. For me, seeing Kenny obviously doing really well, and it's just been awesome being around him and now being his teammate and being on this great team. I'm super excited and it means a lot to me. We work really close with the Geico Honda team and with Chase and you know, watching him develop these skills and he's, he's ready for this 450. I know we're, uh, we're actually looking forward to him getting on the 450 and uh, he rides it really well. Um, we've been out testing a few times now and uh, things, are, things are going really well. In other news, when the US does restart its nationals, Marty Smith, the former 125 champion, America's first ever 125 champion and the guy who won his first ever US national in the 125 class, has been named as the guy whose name will go to the Rookie of the Year award. The Marty Smith Rookie of the Year award is named in honour of the former factory Honda rider. He also raced Suzuki's and other bikes too, but it was those early years on Honda where he was really well known. Marty, along with his wife, was killed in an accident earlier this year, so this is a great honour for anyone who wins the Rookie of the Year to be associated with Marty Smith. If you've got 17 quid to spare, you can spend it on having full internet access to every televised round of the Max's British Championships from 2007 to 2018. It's normally £19, there's a whole £2 off for the early bird discount, and if you want to get access to that, go to Bike GB Online and sign up there. And if you've got some spare money, the Meekum Auctions in America always has some cool bikes. Sometimes there are factory bikes, sometimes there are brand new old stock bikes, and the auction this week's at Indianapolis, and actually it's really disappointing. The only thing that we liked was this cool looking CR250 from 2002. If you like it, you're probably too late to buy it. You might be able to buy it, go to meekamauctions.com. That's it for this week. Thanks for watching Moto Headlines. <laughs>